Well, I think even Jurgen would say that Liverpool aren't unbeatable. That's, I think that's fair to say what they are, though. He's said one of the best teams in the world. And um, they've played at an incredible level for a consistent amount of time now. So huge respect for them, for Jurgen, for his staff, for his players, because what they've achieved alongside Manchester City in terms of pushing the level of the Premier League up consistently has been incredible. Um, I think they do it in a really impressive way, clear identity, teams developed, teams worked over a period of time, they've got a great understanding now. So um, I always like playing against Liverpool because they're, the, they're of the best um, and it's very rare that in any thinking life you get to face the best. So you should look at it as a massive challenge and a huge opportunity. I think they have fourth highest possession stats in the in the league, which is 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 really it's not easy to have. Eh? So um, so you need to do a lot of good stuff to to play to to keep the ball that long in a, in a football game. And um, in the end, it's um, for us always a challenge to face them. We've re realized it in the home game. Uh, it was uh, we, we, when you are not compact against Brighton, then they play play in and around you. That, that's how it is. That's how they set up. Uh, so we have to make sure that we find a, a proper defending attitude, and from there we go. Um, and we are, don't go there to to show who is the better side or who is world class or, and, and stuff like this. Not at all. We try to. We, we are humble enough to go there and really work in incredibly hard and um, yeah, put in a proper shift. Well, what a way to start the Premier League weekend. This should be a fascinating tie because Brighton have a good record against Liverpool recently, Rachel. But in terms of the title race, that is what everyone's going to be thinking about with this match. Can Liverpool close the gap on Man City again? Because we've seen it toing and froing and every weekend there seems to be another little twist or turn. How do you see this one going? I have to fancy Liverpool. Um, yes, Brighton drew 2 2 Anfield. Uh, I've got a good result against them, but it seems like Jurgen Klopp has, has clearly thought about it tactically. As I think most teams going to visit Brighton really respect Graham Potter and how he sets his team up, makes them very hard to beat. They have been somewhat draw specialists a little bit, Brighton, this season. Uh, with Liverpool's ascendancy up the Premier League and really going toe-to-toe -to -toe in Man City for the title, they're going to realise that this is... Well, every Premier League game now leading up to it is... Has, they have to get three points from it, simple as that. Uh, and I think they will brush Brighton to one side. In a title race, as a player, would you prefer to... Be I've never been <laughs> I know, Ledley, <laughs> but let's just hypothetically speak about that. Um, would you prefer to have the points on the board and be Man City at the top, or would you prefer to be Liverpool chasing and playing first each weekend? So Liverpool have the opportunity to now close the gap. What do you think psychologically? Um, it's always, they always say it's better to have the points on the board. Um, um, it's always, they always say it's better to have the points on the board. Um, from Liverpool's point of view now, every game is a pressure game for them. They get, they get a chance to play first uh, and hopefully close that gap to three and then that pressure shifts to, to City. Um, so it's a game of cat and mouse each mm. week, but both teams can't afford to, to, to drop points. Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? Seven wins in a row for Liverpool in the Premier League, Darren. So they've been on really good run of form really since the turn of this year. But they lost in the Champions League midweek. They're still in the Champions mm. League. They still got through that tie because mm. of their victory in the first leg. But do you think that defeat in the week will just derail their confidence a bit? No, that's the worst thing that could possibly happen <laughs> for Brighton, actually. Uh, because, as you guys know, Klopp will demand a response and uh, he'll get that response tomorrow. I said when, when Liverpool managed to, to get themselves into it, this is one of the all-time great title races because you've got two teams at the very top of their game. These are probably the two best teams in Premier League history, I think. Um, the consistency, um, the intensity, the goal ratio, the defensive stability. This is like Federer against Nadal. This is like... Uh, uh, Tyson Fury against Anthony Joshua, all of the sporting matchups you could think of. The, the, we will look back at this title race as one of the all time great heavyweight contests between two giants of domestic football. And I think, as far as uh, Liverpool are concerned, 
12 of their last 14 games they've managed to win. The numbers suggest that Brighton won't win because they've only won, they've drawn 14 times since October. They've only won three games in all competitions since October. So they'll either draw or they'll lose. But against this Liverpool side with so many options, so many goals, so much defensive leadership, Van Dijk obviously at the back, I, they, they won't win. Do, do you feel like there's a, there's a there's a game where they're going to slip up? Do you feel that, that about Liverpool? You know where oh. we've seen Man City recently mm. lose yeah. to Tottenham? Mm. No. They've been on such a run. Is it going to come at some point? How long come? has the show you've been on here? Well, five minutes and you've already mentioned <laughs> that one. Know, yeah, but, <laughs> but, but are they going to finish out the this, season unbeaten? This, this is the reason why I, 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 I think this is one of the all-time top uh, title races because with other teams you could see a game where they could slip mm. up you could see a weakness mm. I don't see a weakness in the Liverpool Dig, team yeah. okay. although there's doubts over the fitness or availability of Canate and Thiago Van Dijk possibly and there are rumours around a Covid um, yeah. outbreak so if those two just hypothetically Van Dijk and Canate are out <laughs> could that be a dent enough if Canate is out Potentially, if Van Dyke, I'd be more worried if Van Dyke yeah. wasn't available because he is just a leader to them. You saw the impact last season mm -hmm. when he didn't play for a sustained period of time. But if, if Van Dyke were to play, then I, 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 it doesn't really matter who else is out yeah. because he's just that much of a colossus to that side. But to us in newspapers, this title race. But you go first, you go second. I don't think it matters to either team who goes first. They know their jobs. They're that good. They're that strong. They're that focused that we are going to see them go blow for blow all the way until that showdown at the Etihad in April. Oh, April the 10th. Everyone's looking forward to that one, Darren. Look, I'm interested in that point you made about not really seeing a weakness in the Liverpool team. Do you see a weakness? No, not, not, not necessarily. Um, I just know what it's like in football where... You go on, a, on an unbelievable run, and they have been now. The pressure's obviously mounting as we get to this stage of the season. And as we've seen with City, you know, inevitably it is a, it's a, it's a result where you slip up. And uh, Liverpool are at that point now where they, they can't afford to. But, and Ledley, don't you think that City are actually getting the best out of Liverpool? It's precisely because City are so good that Liverpool are not slipping up. I think if Liverpool were out yeah. clear... Yeah just as if City were out clear, yeah, yeah, yeah. then there is a potential for them yeah, to take yeah. their eye off the ball. Yeah. I mean, you both mm -hmm. played for teams, I would yeah. imagine, where that's happened. Yeah. Um, but I just think that Liverpool, City are so good, precise, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I mean, ironically, they're up against Palace and they lost to Palace earlier in the season. So if there is a result where mm. they could slip up, it's this one. But I just think that the vein of form they're in at the moment and the fact that they know that if they slip up, Liverpool are there waiting to pounce. That's what makes this such a fascinating time. Do you race. think that this is Liverpool side, because Darren's saying, you know, this is probably the two best sides that we've seen in, in Premier League history, potentially. Do you think this Liverpool team this year are actually playing better football and are a better squad than their title winning season? I, I would say so, because the, the variety is, is one example uh, that they have. Jota has been an unbelievable number nine. Who'd have thought really he'd come in and be as prolific as he has been? Uh, when he's not been available, again, there's been a little bit of a dip uh, for Liverpool. But I say that with regards to the performances. So clearly, they've still gone out and won so many games. And I agree, at this point in the season, when there's limited games left, both teams have won the Premier League, so both teams know what it feels like to be in this situation, to be under that pressure. Both teams are virtually unplayable when they're, when they're playing at full tilt. And that is what they're pushing each other to play at that level. And I agree with what Darren said the little knock midweek uh, where, yes, Liverpool went through in the Champions League, but they didn't perform to their best. Showed a little bit of susceptibility, I would argue, in behind Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yes, he's fantastic going forward, but he left space in behind. Makes the defence have to move over, so leave space in other areas. Uh, that little slip off of, of pressure, of intensity to go and press the ball on Tuesday night uh, against Inter showed that they are a little bit, if they just lapse in concentration against the team or against an individual with fantastic talent, Talent, then you can score, you can breach that back line of Liverpool. Um, but it's it's absolutely a phenomenal run into the final 
sort of couple of months this season. Mm. And when Mo Salah hasn't scored for a couple of matches, you just imagine that he's not going to let it go past another game, Ledley. How would you defend against Mo Salah? Um, I'd be calling for all the help I could get from the rest of my team, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's very difficult to stop on your own. You know, you definitely need uh, help around. Uh, try and limit his chances. Try and keep him on his right as much as possible. You know, his he's left is obviously a strong foot. He's not, not so strong on his right. Uh, but how, yeah, this is a lot easier. How, yeah, so how many highly goals. do you rank him as, as a, a forward in, in the game? Yeah, at the yeah, moment, he's, the yeah, he's, one of, he's definitely one of the best. And uh, uh, in terms of kind of wide, wide forwards, yeah, he's definitely, definitely one of the best and definitely been the best this Premier League season. Yeah. OK. As for Brighton, they did pick up a point against mm. Liverpool earlier this season. And Liverpool are the sort of team that Graham Potter and a Brighton side like to play against because of the style of football that they play. So could you see them potentially causing any problems, Darren? I have to say no. I mean, this could be famous last words mm -hmm. because I remember in this game, Liverpool went two goals up and Brighton fought back superbly. Um, but I just think that... What a goal that was. Brighton, they, they just can't seem to kill teams off. Uh, even though they give themselves a chance in games, defensively they have a lapse or offensively they can't find to find that decisive goal to be able to take all three points. And I also just think that Liverpool right now, one of the key things about this title race is the fluidity of the front lines of both Liverpool and City. If you look at the Premier League right now, there are only two strikers in the top ten. Everyone else is a, is a winger, a wide forward or uh, you know somebody who's natural position is not centre forward and I think that is helping Liverpool against so many teams this season because if you do cut off, when you were asking uh, Ledley about the question about how would you defend against Salah, my, instinctively I was thinking well wouldn't you just stop the supply line to him mm. but if you work to stop that supply line to him there's Mane who can kill you, there's Jota who could kill you there's Henderson who can burst forward from the midfield. I haven't even mentioned Diaz, who's looked as though he's been playing for yeah. Liverpool all his life. Yeah. So do I think Liverpool are going to win? Absolutely, I think they're going to win. I think, listen, if any, everyone, anyone's watching and they support Burn, Brighton, we're at the stage of the season, there's no point in me being nice. I want to be diplomatic, <laughs> but I've got to be honest as well. Liverpool are winning this all day long. Yeah. What's the, what's the reason for Brighton's recent run of form, Rachel. We saw it a minute ago, four defeats in a row. They've only scored one goal in that time as well. They've had such a good start to the season. So what's gone wrong in the last few? Is it a little bit of apathy, a little bit of complaint? Kind of already hit the target of the season that would be expected by most neutrals and potentially even most Brighton fans. Um, and I agree with what Darren said. This problems last season, problem this season continues. More pay, Trossard, that yes, they're scoring a few goals, but they're not prolific. They're not, uh, you know, they, they would have been drawing a lot of games, nil-nil, drawing a lot of games, 1-1. One, one. Uh, they've been hard to beat, and I, it's a huge round of applause to Graham Potter, and I don't say that in any way patronisingly. I mean that sincerely. Uh, he has been phenomenal with the resources that he's had compared to other teams around him. Where they're at is where they probably should be, and, and in some ways they're almost already overachieving with the points accumulation they have. Okay, 